So, what are ideas? Ideas is something that is generated by the ingenuity of the human mind, at least in the physical, mentalese, ideational aspect. So it is something that is generated from a new view, from a new sight, a new discovery, a new reform of thought, geometry of thought that rearranges in the kaleidoscopic ways and leads to certain discoveries. And the idea is a motor of a society. Everything we see around was first the product of an idea. As we can see in the new Dictionary of the History of Ideas by Marian Klein Horowitz, we may retrace certain ideas back to the original idea. For example, let's see, what do we have here? Landscape and the arts. The traditional landscape designed by such explanatory signifiers and so on and so on. There is a separate study called uh, the Intellectual History of Ideas, or the study of how ideas transform throughout ages and how they influence societies, how they modify, how they clash, compartmentalize, reassign, conjoin, and so on and so on. And it is always a defeatist stance saying that everything was invented and everything was already taught over. Which is a lie, because if you have an ingenious insight into many things, critical thinking skills of combining disciplines, you invent new things all the time. And you find pleasure in that. It's a type of intellectual hedonism. As Cato the Elder once wrote, master a subject and words will follow. Therefore, if you master several subjects, you may speak fluently on many matters and with sense and meaning, as well as you may rearrange those ideas and create new ideas basing on what you know, what you think, what you observe, what you experience, and so on, so on, so on. Now, from these ideas, I would like to move to something that is completely abandoned. First things first, to support the theory of platonic ideas as forces, the idea that was long abandoned. I will use the idea of what is mathematics and why mathematics is objective. So this is taken from Philosophy of Mathematics and Introduction to World of Proofs and Pictures by Brown, J. J. Brown. Mathematical results are certain, mathematics is objective, Proofs are essential, diagrams are psychologically useful but prove nothing, diagrams can even be misleading, mathematics is wedded to classical logic, mathematics is independent of sense experience, that is empirical experience, the history of mathematics is cumulative, computer proofs are merely long and complicated regular proofs, some mathematical problems are unsolvable in principle, which makes it quite interesting. Now I would like to move to the platonic idea of math and philosophy of mathematics. So, hmm, let's see. We notice a similarity among various apples and casually say there's something they have in common, but what could this something they have in common be? Should we even take such a question literally? Plato did and said the common thing is the form of an apple. The form is a perfect apple or perhaps a kind of a blueprint. The actual apples we encounter are copied of the form. Copies. Some are better copies than others. A dog is a dog insofar as it participates in the form of a dog and an action is morally just insofar as it participates in the form of justice. Yet, did, uh, was it all that Plato meant by that? Well, not quite. Because he posited the existence of an eternal type and a token that is the shadow of this type. And uh, in such cases, he understood it in divine ways, that is, there are a priori forces that are the generators of ideas. Ideas understood in metaphysical ways, not only as the forces in the physical objective universe, but in a hypostasis, something that is a priori and 
is the forefront of those forces, a pluribus unum, so the collective of stars as ensouled deities, generating their natures and rays, the hypostasis of planets, the multitudes of spirits, and so on and so on, that participate in the nature of the currents of great powers and forces that we may name ideas. Now, to support this view, I will move to my own writing. This is a dialogue called Eons of Ions. And uh, Peripsol is the round, the sun, holy guardian angel or demon, Agathos, daemon, in an act of Tajali that is conveying in such a way. As has already been stated, ideas are not something without life. And there are forces imbued with energies from the simple monadic one to more diverse ones, shot off by the Artemisian arrow of dyadic bin binarity, whose angles and complexities evolve in ever increasing variety of topological spaces and entropy. By being so, they absorb forces that emerge fused and focus a posteriori from a priori. This existing, that is, a priori ideas, the world emerges codependently, ideas being understood as forces of essential realities that in their shadow form physical objective reality. Like the physical forces which are recorded in laws and studied by physicists, the essential forces are studied by people who perform philosophy in a scientific, theological, metaphysical sense. So, as for the genealogy of the governors of the archons of hypostasis of planets and the nature of the stars in this particular world system that people inhabit today, they were formed by forces and ideas that also underwent evolution during the formation of the stars, planets and the like. There is a similar concept in the uh, Hindi Shakti and Vasana idea, Shakti as pure power, energy, and Vasana as the tainting with character that is the nature of those forces and ideas of pure force, pure power. Now, I once attempted to enumerate such powers in the universe and I managed to count 24 of them, but this is only my limited perception. So, for example, fusion could be understood, uh, understood as the force of love. Uh, for example, the decay could be understood as the beta decay of the elements in eternal change and flux. So there is nothing in the world that remains unchanging save for the grammar of the universe emerging from the generator that the Egyptians called Proteus, that contained all forms and all possibilities, that nevertheless obey certain rta, as in Hindi said, or ma'at, as in Egypt, the laws that govern those deep forces that self-emerge from the generator. So, why am I making this lecture? It is to prove that all human ideas are merely a virtuality of processing of the techne arche, of what they witnessed in the world in their own human ways of perceptuality, imagination and processing. Sometimes, when they are stripped of all possible things down to zero, they may recognize those ideas and they feel them as forces. I'm such an example because I felt the idea of divine pride, of great power and force, of great insight and wisdom as powers, as forces emanating from a deity, for example, Horus the Elder. And I can testify that they exist as powers, the ideas that are inseparable from the universe. And when we process as humans, as various ideas, as uh, people that want to generate them, we can create infinite libraries of ideas. But will they all be tied with the notions of the universe? No. There is a thing, a beautiful thing called imagination that makes us generate ideas. And when those ideas meet with the deep grammar of the universe and the metaphysical worlds, that is the point to strike and the alchemical walk begins at that very point of marrying the great laws of the great expanses of the universe 
within a simple microcosm of a human being. So, thank you.